We've been proud to place on record the significance of sitting at the decision-making table. It has been a week to treasure the role that the Māori Party can play as the credible Māori voice in Parliament. And that Māori voice is a voice which comes from a basis of strength, a voice which resonates with the words of all those who fought the good fight to enable our issues to be heard. Our current electoral system is a system which enables those voices to come in through the hallowed halls of Parliament. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I think of some of those people who are now giving due honour and recognition to the Māori Party's position and being able to advance the signing of the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Mr Speaker, I chose to begin my contribution to the Electoral Referendum Bill by acknowledging the impact of many individuals and the whānau, hapu and iwi to which they belong. In recalling those who have paved the way to the United Nations, I seek to remind the House of the role that the Māori Party holds as the natural partner of government, the Māori partner which provides the means by which tangata whenua may be heard in these chambers. The issue of Māori representation is so vital to our constitution and indeed our nation that we had it written into the terms of the relationship and confidence and supply agreement between the National Party and the Māori Party that there will not be a question about the future of the Māori seats in the referendum on MMP. I stand in this debate to respond to the legislation concerning the referendum on the electoral system with my feet firmly planted in the context that is our constitutional framework. Te tiriti or Waitangi. This is a strong legal basis and constitutional framework which the Prime Minister has referred to this week in relation to the historic decision to, su to support the declaration. So how does this new bill on electoral reform relate to this constitutional context? I refer the House to the Ngaitahu Waitangi Tribunal Report of 1991 in which the statement was made it is clear that the exercise of tino rangatiratanga, like kawanatanga, cannot be unfettered. The one must be reconciled with the other. The treaty provides us with the knowledge that as partners to the treaty, Māori should at least be guaranteed representation in the organs of kawanatanga. The treaty is a document of dual accountabilities between two treaty partners. It is in itself about the reconciliation of kawanatanga and rangatiratanga. The 1986 Royal Commission on the Electoral System expressed this view in great clarity, and again I quote, under the terms of the treaty, the Crown formally expressed the existing rights of Māori and undertook to protect them. It is in this sense that Māori people have a special constitutional status. That report went on later to note the failure of successive governments to recognise and give effect to the treaty as the basis of constitutional government in New Zealand. They went further and made an important observation. Although they were not set up for this purpose, the Māori seats have nevertheless come to be regarded by Māori as an important concession to and the principal expression of their constitutional position under the Treaty of Waitangi. Mr Speaker, I wanted to set out this context, a treaty context, before we embark on the process of a referendum on the electoral system, because I wanted to explain why we didn't want to have the constitutional status of the Māori seats mixed up with all of the issues that will be discussed in the review of MMP. Those issues of constitutional significance are not ones that can be dealt with in a quick and slick study or two, or indeed an electoral referendum. There will, however, be every opportunity to consider our constitutional framework within the context of the constitutional review that is also a part of our relationship agreement with the National Party. The Māori Party brought to the negotiating table a policy goal to establish a constitutional commission to begin a constitutional review aimed at, among other things, drafting arrangements that give effect to the Treaty of Waitangi. Te Treaty o Waitangi is the foundation of our electoral system. A treaty-based constitution that recognises tangata whenua might encourage Māori to participate in elections. But let us leave that there for the broader discussion, the longer conversation that the constitutional review will enable. Mr Speaker, I am proud to be a member of the committee established to consider legislation arising out of the referendum and the reform of the electoral finance, electoral finance regime. A particular interest for the Māori Party is about the citizenship rights of all New Zealanders 
to take up their democratic rights to vote and to contribute to the shaping of a new parliament. I was interested in an article by Colin James given at a presentation to the Statistics Forum last month when he reminded participants of the need to focus on Article 3 rights, the citizenship article, and in particular full participation in society and the economy. It was his view that appropriate recognition of Article 3 might imply state-guaranteed action to reduce inequalities of opportunity and to ensure that assistance works. This, in turn, might imply sensitivity to cultural and other differences, including understanding and working with different world views. It was extremely timely to read this analysis and to think about the opportunities for Māori citizens to be full and contributing participants in the electoral system we have today. As we all know, Māori turnout is much lower than the general population. The number of votes cast in the Māori electorates in national elections is roughly 58% of the number cast in general electorates. A focus on citizenship rights would, would inevitably force the question, what is the electoral system, why is the electoral system doing so badly to fail to lift the Māori vote? This question is not a new one. In 1994, I was the instructing solicitor for a Waitangi tribunal claim brought by Hare Puke and supported by the National Māori Congress, the New Zealand Māori Council and the Māori Women's Welfare League. Within the essence of that claim is the argument that the Crown has an obligation under the Treaty of Waitangi to protect the right of Māori to be represented in Parliament and that there are special needs in promoting Māori enrolment and education on this option. Sixteen years on, that claim is just as relevant. How do we ensure that Māori representation is protected and that Māori citizen, citizens take up every opportunity to enrol to vote, do vote, to stand for Parliament and to be represented? Finally, this is a claim that has also gained traction through the status of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. That declaration states that Indigenous peoples have the right to participate fully, if they so choose, at all levels of decision-making in matters that may affect their rights, lives and destinies. We do want to see an increase in Māori electoral participation, and we expect as part of that there may need to be a new legal and administrative responsibilities for government and electoral-related agencies to increase that participation rate. This may be through improving the accuracy, accuracy of the Māori role, improving measures to ensure Māori enrol to vote, or introducing an electoral education campaign to emphasise the importance and significance of voting. It may be that what is required is a focus on cultural awareness and responsiveness in the electoral administration system. We look forward to close analysis as the legislation unfolds concerning the referendum on the electoral system and reform to the electoral finance regime. We are certainly pleased to be part of such a significant opportunity to undertake electoral reform and to that end we support this bill.